Second Wave Positive Psychology, PP 2.0, consisting of two pillars, Existential Positive Psychology and Indigenous Psychology, emerges as a complement to the limitations of positive psychology as championed by Martin Seligman. This special issue illustrates through various papers the depth and breadth PP 2.0 contributes to counseling psychology. Specifically, PP 2.0 introduces the following principles and practices. One, accepting and confronting with courage the reality that life is full of evil and suffering. Two, sustainable well-being can only be achieved through overcoming suffering and the dark side of life. Three, recognizing that everything in life comes in polarities and the importance of achieving an adaptive balance through dialectics. Four, learning from indigenous psychology, such as the ancient wisdom of finding deep joy in bad situations. Second wave, positive psychologies, PP 2.0. Contribution to Counseling Psychology. Positive Psychology, as championed by Seligman, Citation 1999, Seligman and Csikszentmihalyi, Citation 1000, emphasize the importance of positive emotions and positive traits. It has a lot to offer to counseling psychology as an allied field, particularly with its emphasis on client strengths, resilience, and the positive aspects of human functioning. Lopez et al., Citation 2006. Positive psychology also implicitly shares the values of individualism and instrumentalism in Western societies. However, this has been a frequent criticism as it places the responsibility of well-being and success entirely on individuals without considering systemic or structural biases against disadvantaged groups. Meet et al., Citation 2019, Wong, Citation 2016b. Regarding meaning in life, an important topic for counseling psychology, Seligman, Citation 22, defined it this way. Using your signature strengths and virtues in the service of something much larger than you are, PI 63. Here, he defined meaning as an instrument to make one happy. But later research has shown that the pursuit of meaning is not always related to happiness because it demands sacrifice and struggle. Peterson, Citation 2018. And meaning often comes from negative experiences. Frankel, Citation 1985. Vos, Acker, and Catapano, Citation 2019. Positive psychology's research programs are mostly directed to the conditions and outcomes of happiness or well-being that occur when life is in neutral and positive territories. Seligman's vision of the good life represented an idealized conception of the human condition. It is extremely appealing because it offered a seemingly painless way to live a fulfilling life. The good life consists in deriving happiness by using your signature strengths every day in the main realms of living. The meaningful life adds one more component, using these same strengths to forward knowledge, power, or goodness. A life that does this is pregnant with meaning, and if God comes at the end, such a life is sacred. Seligman, Citation 2011, Pilot 224. A more realistic view of the good life can be found in the following quotes from another influential positive psychologist, Robert Emmons, who wrote at about the same time as Seligman's launch of positive psychology. The good life is not one that is achieved through momentary pleasures or defensive illusions, but through meeting suffering head-on and transforming it into opportunities for meaning, wisdom, and growth, with the ultimate objective being the development of the person into a fully functioning, mature being. Emmons Citation 1003, PL 156. More recently, 
Emin, Citation 2013, wrote, to deny that life has its share of disappointments, frustrations, losses, hurts, setbacks, and sadness would be unrealistic and untenable. Life is suffering. No amount of positive thinking exercises will change this truth. In light of these two contrasting visions, it is clear that Seligman's view left out suffering as an inevitable part of living. His prescription for the good life may work only in a perfect world without evil people, without suffering. But in reality, all people suffer for any of the following reasons. One, some people create their own hell with their unfettered desires and evil schemes to hurt others for their own gain, eventually suffering the consequences. Two, some people are victims of natural disasters, accidents, life circumstances, and fate. Three, some people suffer from their inner demons, painful memories, character defects, or self-destructive habits. Four, most people suffer from the social reality of a dominance hierarchy, an unequal distribution of opportunities, and an ever-widening income gap. Five, a small group of people suffer for their willingness to sacrifice and even die pursuing the narrow and difficult path of truth justice, and compassion. What is second wave positive psychology? Why is it necessary? Complementing positive psychology's focus on the neutral and positive territories of life, second wave positive psychology, PP 2.0, recognized that for most people, life is lived in negative territories. Individuals can be hurt or injured at all levels personal, interpersonal, and societal. In an authoritarian society, innocent people can be tortured and killed for their beliefs. In a free society, smart people motivated by the single-minded pursuit of personal happiness and success, aided by wealth and digital power, can also destroy many lives if they are not morally constrained by their conscience and or fear of God. PP 2.0, as conceptualized by Wang, Citation 2011, proposed that the most promising strategy to accomplish the mission of positive psychology is to confront the dark side of human existence and understand the unique experience and expression of well-being in different cultures. Thus, PP 2.0 emphasized the existential universal on one hand and indigenous cultural expression on the other hand. In sum, PP 2.0 is an umbrella term for a more nuanced and balanced approach to positive psychology. More specifically, the two pillars of PP 2.0 are existential positive psychology, Wong, citation 2009, citation 2016a, and indigenous psychology, Chang, Downey, Hirsch, and Lin, Citation 2016, Wong, Citation 2013, Citation 26B. These two themes are complementary to each other, resulting in a positive psychology with greater depth by including the existential dimension, e.g. John Speakin and Wong, Citation 2019, and greater breadth by including the indigenous view of happiness, e.g. Huang, Citation 2019, the following basic tenets set PP 2.0 apart as distinct from positive psychology. Accept that life is full of evil and suffering. Throughout human history, in everyday news and from our own personal experience, we know that suffering is an undeniable, self-evident reality. We also know that suffering is not something that can be ignored or avoided. It lurks at every corner or exist just below the surface, ready to break into the open and disrupt our lives. Malpas and Lickus, Citation 2012, concluded that suffering is universal. 
Suffering involves a negative emotion and poses a harm or threat of harm to body and mind. A recent article by Mead et al., citation 2019, raised a similar ethical concern regarding the current well-being research. The construct of well-being has been criticized as a neoliberal construction of Western individualism that ignores wider systemic issues, including increasing burden of chronic disease, widening inequality, concerns over environmental degradation, and anthropogenic climate change. Evil in whatever disguise is still evil, whether it appears as a shining angel or speaks the language of justice and compassion, whether it is in your family or in your church, evil always plays the same destructive game of deception, treachery, exploitation, oppression, and taking advantage of others. Evil does not disappear when we ignore its existence and focus on going about our daily business or pursuing happiness. By ignoring its existence, people are actually complicit in allowing evil to grow. In addition to coping with the evil that has permeated every aspect of our lives, we also have to contend with suffering from natural disasters, sickness, losses coming from advanced age, and the process of dying. The daily stress of competition, human conflict, frustration, and harassment can consume our positive energy and contribute to our negative emotions, e.g. Hutri and Lindemann, citation Lord 2. In fact, even the pursuit of happiness is a source of suffering. Wong, citation 2007. Gruber, Maus, and Tamir, citation 2011, have documented that people in hot pursuit of happiness tend to be more depressed, miserable, and unhappy. Research shows that psychological pain, whatever the cause, can be best overcome by directly accepting it. Linehan, citation 1993, confronting rather than suppressing it, Kiofi and Holloway, citation 1993, and transforming its meaning, Lopez Sola, Coban, and Wager, citation 2018. This research shows that it is more adaptive to accept and transform suffering than to avoid it. That is why PP 2.0 was developed to fill the gap. PP 2.0 is necessary to confront and transform suffering through meaning and meaning-focused interventions. Meaningful living and sustainable well-being depend on embracing and transforming suffering. Frankel, citation, 1985. Peterson, citation, 2018. Wong, citation, 2018. Citation 2019. Even though we do not seek out suffering, it is an inextricable aspect of some of the most valuable things we all seek. There is the pain of separation between two individuals passionately in love. There is a deep sorrow within loving parents who grieve the loss of a child. Scaling the mountaintop of achievement in any domain involves rigorous training, personal sacrifices, setbacks, and stretching oneself in spite of pain. Suffering is the price we pay for being fully human. As long as there are desires, ignorance, and selfishness, there will be conflicts and sufferings. As long as there is life and consciousnesses, there is suffering. However, out of the dirty soil of evil and suffering emerges the noble souls of courage, resilience, and virtues. That is exactly what Buddhism teaches us about suffering and happiness. Buddha taught his followers the Four Noble Truths as the pathway to be liberated from suffering and achieve happiness. Dalai Lama, citation 1998. 1. Life is suffering dukkha. 2. Dukkha arises from craving. 3. Dukkha can be eliminated. 4. The way to the elimination of dukkha 
is the Eightfold Path. It is not surprising that some of the happiest people are Buddhist monks, such as Matteo Ricard, Citation 2008, because they recognize that the best way to achieve durable happiness is to eliminate the roots of suffering, i.e. desires and ignorance, through commitment to the daily practice of the Eightfold Path, which includes mindful meditation. For years, I have argued that it is not possible to achieve sustainable happiness and well-being without overcoming evil and suffering. Just as it is impossible for physicians and medical scientists to improve physical health without addressing the reality of pathogens and pain. Thin et al., Citation 2017, Wong and Bowers, Citation 2018. Anderson, Citation 2014, in his edited book, World Suffering and Quality of Life, documented that how we react to suffering has important implications for well-being. Post-traumatic growth is already a well-established area of research. Joseph and Lindley, Citation 2006. Tedeschi, Shakespeare Finch, Taku and Calhoun, Citation 2018. Generally, people who experience post-traumatic growth become stronger with a better sense of resiliency and wisdom, become more compassionate and better in relationships, tend to reevaluate their priorities, have increased appreciation for life, and undergo positive changes in their spiritual beliefs. The same growth principle can be applied to all kinds of commonplace suffering. That is why it seems more beneficial to treat healing and thriving not as two separate disciplines, but as two sides of the same coin. Emphasizing the dynamic balance between opposites through dialectics. There is so much we can learn from some ancient cultures, such as indigenous Chinese psychology. One of his important contributions to positive psychology is the dialectic principle, Peng and Nisbet Citation 999. Wong's Citation 2012 Dual Systems Model argues that this dialectic principle is essential for achieving a balanced good life. Not by accentuating the positive and avoiding the negative, but by embracing and integrating both positive and negative experiences. A basic tenet of positive psychology is that positive emotions and negative emotions are separate constructs or dimensions. Thus, the lack of negative emotions does not guarantee positive emotions, and the absence of positive emotions does not always mean the presence of negative emotions. Positive psychology focuses on doing things to optimize positive emotions without being overly concerned about negative emotions. Focusing only on the positive has proven to be a very effective strategy in the early stages of development in this discipline. But as positive psychology matures, it needs to be more balanced and nuanced in order to broaden its empirical base and become more relevant to the suffering masses in chronic malignant conditions. PP 2.0 proposes that the best way to build up and maintain positive emotions is to confront, accommodate, or transform negative emotions at the same time. Because everything in nature exists in polarity. Whenever there is something positive or good, there is always something negative or bad, and vice versa. Ig, left necked, citation 2013. Therefore, optimal character development or happiness does not depend on building up only the positive, but also depends on navigating the optimal balance between positive and negative for each context. PP 2.0 seeks such a balance through the dialectical interplay between positive and negative in adaptation. Lomas and Ifzan, Citation 2016, McMahon et al., Citation 2015, Wong, 
Citation 2011, Citation 2012. Incorporating Indigenous Positive Psychology. Many psychologists have emphasized the importance of culture in well-being and the need for diversifying positive psychology, EAG, Oishi and Shimak, Citation 2010, Rich and Siri Kantrap on Citation 2017. Recent trends have moved from cross-cultural studies to indigenous positive psychology, which emphasizes that what is universal is experienced and expressed differently in different cultures. Fleming and Manning, Citation 2019, have documented that health and well-being vary in different cultures and indigenous peoples. Tsai, Citation 2007, has shown that the ideal effect or the emotion that people desire most varies across cultures. Ide and Diner, Citation 2001, have also found evidence for different norms for experiencing emotions in different cultures. Individualistic and collectivistic nations differed most strongly in norms for self-reflective emotions, EIG, pride and guilt, with the former considering pride as a desirable emotion and the latter considering guilt as a desirable emotion. Thus, Chang et al., Sidachin 2016, proposed that the second call for action for positive psychology is to integrate the indigenous positive psychology from different ethnic and racial groups with mainstream research. Brunner, Citation 1986, Citation 1990, conceptualized meaning not only from a person-centered perspective, but from cultural anthropology. He argued that culture and the quest for meaning within culture are the proper causes of human action. Citation, 1990, P.N. 20. In honoring his contribution, Schwader, Citation 2008, explained the need to understand how meaning and value are shaped culturally. Meanings mediate the connection between stimulus and response. Hence, an unmediated stimulus, the pristine thing in and of itself, as a noumena, is neither a necessary nor a sufficient condition for a response. Moreover, where there are many human minds living together, there are traditions of historically made, normatively endorsed and received meanings. That is to say, across time and space, there are and have been many durable and locally credible ways to picture and value the world. P. 62. In sum, the aim of PP 2.0 is to bring out the best in humanity, individually and collectively, in spite of suffering and evil. Secondly, PP 2.0 favors the dialectical principle of yin and yang as a more realistic way to enhance positive mental health. Consequently, PP 2.0 does not confine itself to neutral or positive territories. It covers the totality of human experiences and is relevant to underprivileged and suffering people in all cultures. Implications of PP 2.0 for Counseling Psychology PP 2.0 has important implications for counseling and therapy by opening up new approaches to human problems. Several important implications for research and applications can be derived from PP 2.0. This special issue provides several examples of how PP 2.0 adds both depth and breadth to counseling psychology. 1. PP 2.0 adds an existential dimension to every area of positive psychology. For example, Jan Spiken and Wong, citation 2019, reported the development of an existential gratitude scale, which assesses the tendency to count our blessings in times of adversity. This paper also described the existential gratitude intervention for people suffering from illnesses or traumas as one of the pathways for post-traumatic growth. 
2. PP 2.0 also adds depth to counseling psychology by applying the paradoxical principle of treating suffering as the foundation for sustainable well-being, as illustrated by Leung's Citation 2019, Tragic Optimism of Restoring Hope Through Accepting and Overcoming Traumas, and Bauer's Citation 2019, Mature Happiness Through Transcending the Dark Side of Life. Three, PP 2.0 adds breadth to counseling psychology by emphasizing the yin-yang principle of achieving psychological flexibility and well-being through navigating the world of polarity and finding a dynamic and adaptive balance in each context. This is illustrated by Leontiev's Citation 2019 research on the dialectics of aloneness between positive and negative meaning through differential assessment. Lee, Wong, and Chao's Citation 2019 Research of Investigating the Complex Interaction Between Positive and Negative Psychological Processes in Counseling. And Jans Bikin's Citation 2019 Paper on the Dialectic Dynamics Between Subjective Well-Being and Psychopathology. Nemiak's Citation 2019 Research of Finding the Golden Mean Between Overuse and Underuse of Character Strengths is another example of finding the optimal balance in each context. Furthermore, Newitt, Worth, and Smith, Citation 19, show that meaning-making in life stories can be viewed as a dynamic balance between different experiences of meanings that may provide a person with the greatest sense of who they are. 4. PP 2.0 also adds breadth by recognizing the importance of integrating indigenous psychology and respecting its distinct cultural conceptions of well-being. As illustrated by Huang's Citation 2019, attempt to bridge the gap between humanistic psychology and positive psychology. With his psychodynamic mandala model of self-nature, Zhang's Citation 2019, attempt to apply Wong's meaning therapy to the Chinese cultural context as a pathway to the good life. And Cohen and Bai's Citation 2019 paper, which makes the case that when aging is viewed from a post-egoic perspective inherent in Taoism, it becomes the process of saging, living a life of wisdom, compassion, and joy. 5. PP 2.0 enriches counseling psychology by exploring the healing power of transforming negatives into positives. Lomas, Citation 2019 paper, focuses on reframing anger as a moral emotional response to perceived transgressions, thereby endowing it with meaning. Carreno and Perez Escobar, Citation 2019, challenge the medical model of addiction as a brain disease proposing a meaning-centered approach for addiction recovery. Mayer, Van der Heiden, and Oosthuizen, Citation 2019, focus on transforming shame, guilt, and anxiety into positive experiences. Thomas Paper, Citation 2019, explores the process of transforming emotional suffering into flourishing thorough, the lens of accelerated experiential dynamic psychotherapy. Finally, Armstrong, Desson, St. John, and Watt, Citation 2019, describe a program of developing resilience through emotions, attitudes, and meaning from a PP 2.0 perspective. The above papers illustrate how PP 2.0 opens up a new vista for research and interventions in counseling psychology, well beyond the familiar territory of mechanistic and binary conceptions so prevalent in psychology. We encourage more counseling psychologists to explore the new opportunities in PP 2.0, which advocates that sustainable well-being for individuals and institutions can be best achieved by embracing and transforming the dark side of human existence. Disclosure statement. No potential conflict of interest was reported by the author. Additional information. Notes on Contributors, Paul T.P. Wong, 
Paul T. P. Wong, PhD, C. Psych, is Professor Emeritus of Trent University. He is a Fellow of APA and CPA and President of the International Network on Personal Meaning, www.meaning.ca, and the Meaning Centered Counseling Institute, Inc., Editor of the International Journal of Existential Positive Psychology. He has also edited two influential volumes on the human quest for meaning. A prolific writer, he is one of the most cited existential and positive psychologists. The originator of meaning therapy and international meaning conferences. He has been invited to give keynotes and meaning therapy workshops worldwide. He is the recent recipient of the Carl Rogers Award from the Society for Humanistic Psychology, Diva 32 of the APA.